on the boat 64, even further south. We've used a slightly different editing technique in this video, so let us know what you think in the description. We find an amazing hidden anchorage with crystal clear water. We visit Palermo, tick off the bucket list, and we give an explanation of why we docked in a different way. Palermo is one of the biggest commercial ports in Sicily. As we entered the port, a little chap came up to us in his rib and asked us if we'd got a booking. Obviously he was trying to, well, flog his uh, marina berths. They franchised the berths out in a lot of marinas, we'd already booked so we didn't need his services. So he scooted off. Once we got clearance for our marina berth and it had been assigned to us, we lined ourselves up into the wind. Now if you watch this piece of footage, you'll see that we're doing something different. There's a reason behind it. But while you watch it, think what that reason could be. Having little or no tides, there's no major current running in this harbour, but let's explain why we did it like this. So here's the reason. We didn't go in like this, reversing in, downwind of the slip, coming across the other boats, and then backwards into our berth, for this reason. We'd have got to this point, and the wind would have been forcing us onto the downwind boats. If anything had gone wrong, we'd have crashed straight into them. So what we did was we reversed downwind, brought the back of the boat in close and allowed the wind to catch the bow and bring us round. As we then straighten up towards the berth, the wind is round now pushing us on the nose. And the boat always pivots better with the wind pushing the nose round. It makes for a much more controlled entrance into the berth. The other reason is reversing into the wind would have slowed our progress through the water and it's water over the rudder that gives you steerage. Doing it the other way gives you more steerage. So the main town of Palermo, or city of Palermo, is over there and we'll show you some clips of our uh, excursions in a bit. This is the marina at City Mar and there's a huge promenade which goes back, oh I don't know, a quarter of a mile or so. You take your life in your hands going across the zebra crossing, but the city is just beautiful. It just takes your breath away. Absolutely beautiful. Somebody on that Lambretta. And that's the City Mile offices. Showers, cold drinks, 24 hours a day. All protected by CCTV. Yeah, we've been made very welcome here. Oh, I wonder what that is. Looks pretty old. Well, older than me. This is the uh, car park and doggy walk at the marina where we are. So 
restaurant over there. Huh, someone walking a dog. The cricket pitch isn't looking too good this year, darling, is it? They must have had a couple of rough games, I think. Pigeons are having a good feast. Yeah. That's the biggest wood pigeons I've ever seen. You sure they're not geese? The city was founded in 734 BC by the Phoenicians as the city of Ziz. Palermo then became a possession of Carthage. Two Greek colonies were established, known collectively as Panormus, or Allport. The Carthaginians used this name on their coins after the 5th century BC. As Panormus, the town became part of the Roman Republic and Empire for over a thousand years. From 831 to 1072, the city was under Arab rule during the Emirate of Sicily when the city first became a capital. The Arabs shifted the Greek name into Balam, which is Arabic, the root for Palermo's present day name. Following the Norman reconquest, Palermo became the capital of a new kingdom from 1130 to 1816, the Kingdom of Sicily and the capital of the Holy Roman Empire under Emperor Frederick II and King Conrad IV. Lovely few days in Palermo. We did lots of sightseeing, we reprovisioned the boat, topped up the water, and it was time to move on. No sailing today. Flat calm, like a mill pond. Goodbye, Palermo. Thanks for having us. It's been great. Why wouldn't I be smiling? We've got apparent wind angle 94, we're doing just over six knots, the shoot's up. I don't know where those dolphins have gone. Hey Oz. Our next anchorage we found by chance and it was just beautiful.
Shall I do me T.E. Lawrence now, Dad? Is it the right time? Next time on Impavidus, we look at anchoring. We show you what happens to your chain when it's on the seabed, and we look at the technical side of anchoring, depths, scope, etc. Until then, look at this. So here's a boat that's been tied up a while. Um, I think the reason for it being tied up here is kind of evident when I show you that. 20,000 pound boat, 20 pounds worth of anchor. Before you leave, we just wanted to say a few things about the adverts that run on YouTube. We don't get to pick what adverts run on our videos. That's done by YouTube. YouTube recently changed their policy on mid-roll or mid-video adverts. We weren't aware of it and we're going back through turning them all off because we can do that, but it's going to take some time. So before someone jumps in the comments and says, ah, but I bet you made a fortune out of your last video with all those adverts, you're right. Here's the full disclosure. The last video we made, made 85 pence, and at two gigabytes, it cost us three pounds 50 to upload. So there you go. These videos are really made possible by our Patreons. However, Patreons get to see all our videos without any advertising at all. So pop over, join the crew. And as always, sail safe. Bye. Bye.